Hey, happy Tuesday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, I'm going to give you the latest information on what's going on with our jet stream because our pattern is about to change. Now, we're about to get this hurricane that's going in the eastern Pacific. This is about to head towards our pattern while we still have this storm coming in from the northwest. This is going to head towards our pattern as well. And as we go further into this setup, we're going to get a high pressure setup over here. This is just going to spin around over here, a nice little high pressure. And this is going to stay there almost till the end of October. Now, this is bringing a lot of impacts. So I'm going to show you all the latest information so we can stay up to date on what's going on with this cycle. So you know exactly what's coming for the rest of October. So if you've never been here before, make sure you subscribe. That way you get all the latest updates. More importantly, make sure you click that bell. That way you get all notifications. Now, let's get into the information. Now, you do see the latest information that has come out for our EPR, East Pacific Oscillation, our jet stream going from that high ridge where you have the big warm up to where we have these troughs coming down for the rest of October. And as you go towards late October, it's going to go right back towards that high ridge. So we have cool air coming on in, and this is going to last all the way until the end of October. But at the same time, you can see where all that strength is coming at the end of October. So as we get that deep trough coming in from the southeast, time and date always is above my head. That goes out through the northeast, still showing is going to bring some rainfall, not as heavy as being told, guys. Why you get this cooler air still coming through, and then it's going to be a low trough on the west coast. Your EPO is going to go way down into the negative all the way until the 20s and further than that according to teleconnections now you can see a little bit further with gfs and you can see that epo that east pacific oscillation that jet stream goes further and further to the south all the way until the end of october and then we're going to get more storms that's going to come swooping on in from the northwest and go even further to the south with that potential strong storm coming at the end of October, very beginning of November. If you remember, I told you that we have these very cool temperatures that's coming through, and it's going to be towards the end of October, towards the beginning of November, and it looks like it's still bringing the cold temperatures, but it's bringing a powerful storm with that as well. Ural sees it and GFS. And until then, we're going to have a train of storms in this direction. And you can see this transition still on this update, guys. Next 6 to 10 day temperature probability as you have this big heat dome, this big ridge, still moving from the west over central U.S. and it will go further towards the east. And you can see this when you look at the 8 to 14 days, how it transfers over to the east side of U.S. being above average temperatures while the cooler air starts coming in, you get below average with that low EPO, that big jet stream that dips all the way down to the southwest, allowing all this cool air to come in. And then your jet stream and your battle is going to be along here. So you can see this on the latest from the Euro as you get these storms building up towards this weekend. Remember, this is either week six or week seven. You have thunderstorms in the northeast. Not bringing any strong snow or anything with that. Not even bringing a lot of high winds. And it's just going to get you on a wraparound on maybe some winds finally kicking in and some rainfall. It's not going to be flooding the whole northeast. But now we're going into this pattern where that high pressure is going to start moving over. It's going to be below average on the precipitation. But you're also going to be above average on your temperatures because all this heat coming in. And now your battles are all the way from the west coast with the cold air and these storms coming from the southwest and building towards the Great Lakes up towards Ohio Valley. And you can't see too far with Euro, but you can see with GFS, the exact same pattern is setting up. And these storms are going to keep coming from the southwest, going along this ridge and battling all across the central U.S., bringing severe weather, bringing a lot of high winds. So wherever there's going to be snowfall, if you have those high winds, you're going to have blizzards. Wherever the severe weather is, you're going to have damaging winds coming with that front. Now, they already put out a risk for high winds from the 24th through the 28th for this region, from the south central to the north central as it comes in. I think it will bend a little bit further towards the upper Midwest. You also can see the latest update with the Euro that we are going to get some 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts coming in with that little short wave trough for the upper Midwest. But as the storms come from the south central towards the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, that is bringing 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts with that. Not a whole bunch, but as we get closer, we're going to get more information. This is trending the same pattern, just a little stronger. GFS takes the energy and that hurricane in the eastern Pacific a little bit stronger than the Euro. 
bring out more winds widespread, more like the four corners all the way towards the Great Lakes and bring in a lot of high winds with that as well towards the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes. Started going from 40 to 50 and almost a big widespread area. So to find out what's trending, because when the models don't agree, what is the trend is your friend? And it's more likely the outcome. You can see with the Canadian model that it agrees with the GFS. There is going to be a lot of stronger winds, not just a little bit of it like the Euro. It's going to be a bigger compact area. It is agreeing with the path from the Euro, but the intensity coming from the GFS, including that potential hurricane in the eastern Pacific, bringing stronger winds with this pattern. Plus still bringing that risk for a lot of flooding. From the 24th through the 28th, you still have a slight risk for heavy precipitation in all of this green region. And this can move a little bit further to the east. But this is almost like what the Canadian is seeing. You can also see the goodness of this pattern when you look at the precipitation. Next is 6 to 10 day, we have the high pressure moving in. So you're going below average in your precipitation on the east coast. But you're above average on all of this green for the next 6 to 10 days. And it's going to move further to the east as you go towards the end of October. As you go towards the 8 to 14 days. This pattern setup right here is going to bring all this rainfall for the next couple of weeks. And eventually it will go over the deep south where they are in extreme and exceptional drought. So hopefully they do get that rainfall as well. But just going by the next 10 days which always changes you can see with the euro it is bringing a nasty low strip all the way from the south central all the way to the upper midwest over by the great lakes as it does this pattern you also get it for the northwest and you get some for the new england states as you get that troughing of that storm that nor'easter is coming to you with just some winds and some a little bit of rainfall no snow at all but you can see the difference with gfs GFS is taking it where it's a little bit more up Midwest, a little bit more for the South Central, kind of an area where the precipitation risk is. Even the update on the GFS is taking it a little bit heavier. And that is what the Canadian sees. The Canadian sees that it's going to be a heavy amount of rainfall coming as this high pressure just spins around, bringing all this tropical moisture right into our jet stream. So you can see what the first system, what National Weather Service is thinking. You can see what the rainfall coming in from Wednesday to Wednesday evening. Rainfall is likely in the dark green. You have a chance of rain in the light green. But as you go through Thursday, it's going to go by the Great Lakes. As you go through Friday and Saturday, you're going to get that nor'easter in the northeast and bring in rainfall chances in all this dark green. You have a chance in, in the light green, but you're likely to have it more like in this dark green as you go from Friday into Saturday on that storm system. Then on Sunday, it's going to go towards the New England states. You're going to start getting that setup coming in for the high pressure from Monday and Tuesday. Then we're going to be in that pattern. And this is going to slowly retract to the east, southeast, bringing these storms further and further to the south. Plus, the strong system forming at the end of October. A strong system forming another system in the eastern pacific and that's after we done had one already in the eastern pacific and you can see the latest update on your potential velocity anomaly with the gfs as you go from the 25th all the way towards the end of october these storms are going to keep on going through the eastern pacific it's not going to be for us because we're going to have that high pressure spinning around keeping everything out of the gulf of mexico this is going to be in the eastern pacific storm after storm that's going to go into our jet stream you can see the exact same thing for the euro, but the euro is showing that it will be stronger as we go towards the end of October, beginning of November, as another system forms up in the eastern Pacific. And once again, we're going to be in this pattern. So that will go into our jet stream and go towards our storm after storm that comes in. It is going to be a train of storms on this pattern. Still not showing that quite a lot of snow yet for the Euro. It's going right into that time period. But without them cool temperatures coming further in, it won't be bringing a lot of that snowfall. Now you still have it with the Canadian model. The Canadian model is still showing that that is going to bring a lot of snowfall to the upper Midwest. Not as far down as over here across the Corn Belt, but it has gone to the upper Midwest. And that seems to be what the trend is. You can see here with the GFS that it did agree is coming on that deep dip, all these very cold temperatures, meeting up, bringing a lot of snowfall, but don't quite know where that's going to meet up. The update on GFS takes it still a little further to the south, but still right on that ridge that we're going to be seeing this jet stream be on. So whether there's going to be a lot, whether there's going to be a little bit it is going to be on this 
pattern and not any further to the south. And that is the updates. So I hope this helps you figure out what the weather pattern is that we're going into and what could be expected. We will have better detail as we get closer towards these events of these storms coming in. But we do have a train of them coming with a big bang, it looks like, towards the end of October. So I appreciate every single one of y'all. I hope you have a very great day today. And real quick, I want to talk to you with Psalm 80, 14 through 19. Return, we beseech thee, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven, and behold, and visit this vine. It is burned with fire, it is cut down. They perish at the rebuke of thy countenance. Let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand, upon the son of man whom thou madest strong for thyself. So will not we go back from thee, quicken us, and we will call upon thy name. Turn us again, O Lord God of hosts, Cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you again for your time. I appreciate every single one of y'all. And remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I hope he blesses you every single day of your life, you and your families, and forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Have a great day, everyone.